Hello everyone, this is Mining Tips and you're watching part 2 of RV Mining Guide series. In part 1 of this series we looked at the RV mining itself, uh, what are the hardware choices that are recommended for RV mining and how different choices affect the Spora or the RV mining hash rate. In this part we would be looking at how to set up a private miner and uh, how to configure your RV storage. What are the different pros and cons of different types of storage configuration and what did I use and why? For my experiments, I have used uh, Ubuntu 20.04.03 LTS release and following are the PC hardware specifications of my test bench. I've used the Ryzen 9 3950X and the CPU clock is locked at 4 GHz. The RAM I used is a Samsung B die kit and I'm running it at 3800 MHz. Note that I am also running the Infinity Fabric Speed at 1 is to 1 ratio, so the Infinity Fabric Speed is running at 1900 MHz. My storage configuration is as follows I have 16 terabytes in 6 NVMe drives. Um, and 4 terabytes in two SSD drives. The SSD drives are in RAID 0 configuration while the NVMe drives are just uh, running as a bunch of disk. I've added the reference guide, the official RV mining guide and the prerequisite softwares that I used for tuning and setting up the miner in the description below. Now let's move on to the step-by-step -step guide for RV mining. In step 1, you would download the official RV release from the GitHub repository. I chose to uh, download this to a drive that I have the operating system on. You can also choose to store this uh, on one of the storage devices like an NVMe drive or SSD. Uh, if that's what you would like to do. Step 2. Apply the settings to handle large number of files. You can just follow the instructions on the web page uh, to how to achieve this. It's pretty straightforward so I'm not spending too much time on this. For me this worked by just changing the limit in the below file which is slash etc slash systemd slash system dot conf. Step 3. Tune the file system. We need to apply this to all the storage devices that we intend to use for RV mining. Refer the official mining guide link in the description below to figure out how to achieve this. We need to apply this to all the storage devices. This might be your NVMe drives or the SSDs that you are going to have the Weave on. Please note that you are not supposed to apply this tuning to the SSD or the hard drive that you have your primary operating system on. Step 4. How to set up the storage. This might be the most important one in this tutorial. Now, there are four folders in the RV mining official folder uh, that uh, stores significant amount of data or handles large number of files. These are the chunk storage folder which is the primary folder that you would have the public view on. Uh, next you have the transactions folder, the wallet list folder, and the rocks db folder. Now in my case the chunk storage folder is pointing to an HTD setup which is where I would be syncing the weave. And the other folders, the three other folders which are the transactions, the rocks db and the wallet list folder is pointing to a fast SSD drive and I've repurposed my OS drive's empty space to uh, download the appropriate content. One thing to be noted is the large directory flag has to be applied to each of the device that you are going to use for the storage setup. Let's see in terms of commands how I achieved this. Uh, I created mount points for these ARV folders that I mentioned previously. This is chunk storage folder, the transactions folder, wallet list folder, and the rocks db folder. So once you have created all of these mount points, 
uh, you need to create the sim links or symbolic links uh, to point to each of these directories. This is achieved by the following commands. Let's verify if the symbolic links have been properly configured. You do this by running the following command. One thing to be noted is that you should have already applied the large directory flag to all of the devices that you are going to use in the storage setup. This would have been accomplished in step 2. Step 5. Download RV tools from the GitHub repository. Credit to Francesco for this one. Uh, we use this tool to estimate the Spora hash rate and also for other purposes such as getting a peer list or to figure out how much V we have synced. Now that we have prepped the storage setup we need some data to be synced before we can officially start mining. So let's sync some weave. Below is a sample bash script that I used. What the bash script does is it downloads all the RV related data from the peers and this peer information is populated using the RV tools. It takes uh, several hours to a few days to get some weave synced depending on your internet speed. Remember that the Spora hash rate is also impacted by the amount of weave you have on your storage setup. Okay, by now you would have already synced some R weave. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next step which is the step 7. How to set up the chunk storage configuration. Recall that in the previous step, uh, you made a symbolic link to a hard drive to save your weave data and this is what you are mainly syncing from the peers or to put it better this is the largest files that you are syncing now what we would want to do is spread out this chunk storage data into your storage setup now there are multiple options to choose from you can opt for raid uh, learn more about RAID if you would like to or just uh, learn how to create a software RAID in Linux using MDADM links to both are available in the description now the second option that you could use for your storage setup is JBOF which stands for just a bunch of flash now both of these options have their own merits and cons in RAID 0 your work as a user is less since you are presented with a storage medium that sums up your individual storage devices which means if you have set up your RAID configuration with say four uh, storage devices you are presented with a single storage medium as the summation of these individual drives in JBOF setup however you would manually have to set up these four individual storage devices to be seen as a single device. This is again achieved using symbolic links. That's the beauty about it. Please do note in your RAID configuration you would want to use similar size drives otherwise you would end up losing storage space. This is not the scenario in the case of JBOF. You might consider this as a con to RAID configuration. Now, this was not the main concern of mine. My main concern was that if you would like to add a drive to the existing RAID setup or remove a drive from the RAID setup, it's not easy and you are at the risk of losing all the data that's stored on this RAID setup. While in the case of JBOB setup, you don't have this risk anymore. Now there is a con uh, in the JBOF setup. The Linux software RAID setup uh, evenly distributes any data that you uh, write to the storage medium uh, and 
this uh, even distribution of data is taken care by the operating system and this is not facilitated in the case of jbof because as a user you set it up as jbof and you would have to take care of the spread of the data onto the individual drives now in my experience the nvme drives are pretty fast as they are and the main reason why people opt for RAID 0 configuration is for speed. You get effectively twice the read speeds and the write speeds um, on the drives that are RAIDed. But in the case of NVMe drives, if you RAID them, you are not effectively getting the 2x speeds. In fact, uh, you might get negative impact just because there is a, an overhead associated to the RAID configuration. So in the end, I decided to use JBOF setup for the NVMe drives that I have and RAID 0 for the SSG drives that I have. Uh, this is the reason Step 8 has been tagged as hybrid storage. Um, since my setup consists of 6 NVMe drives, and two SSD drives in RAID 0. The details of these drives are as follows. Now, as you can see, uh, I have set up different mount points for these individual NVMe drives and the Linux MDADM RAID 0 configuration is mounted on a different mount point. Uh, these mount points are seen as slash mnt slash rv slash d00 to d05 for the nvme drives and d06 for the raid 0 ssd drive now we copy the data from the chunk storage folder to to these individual mount points and also create a new mount point at slash mnt slash rv slash my chunk storage and CD into it and create new symlinks that would point to these individual chunk storage files that is spread across your hybrid storage. Now let's move on to the next step which is the step 9 uh, to download the Cronenberg miner and start mining. Now the Cronenberg miner is a private miner running on a private pool uh, but I found that it's one of the fastest uh, available from the setup miners that I've tested. So in order to download the miner you would have to join the official RV Discord and join the Cronenberg pool by sending a DM to the pool owner and get a private invite. As usual the link is available in the description. Now assuming you have already set up an account with the pool Cronenberg and downloaded the Cronenberg miner uh, going forward for simplicity I would refer it as K minor. Now let's check up uh, some of the prerequisites uh, required to run the K minor which is the U limit has to be set to 900,000 or a million. Uh, where you can verify it by running the command U limit hyphen N. The second thing to verify is if the huge pages are enabled. Uh, you can run the following command uh, to check it. If it's not set, set it to 1000 or 2000. Now the K miners uh, does come with a sample JSON file, which is the configuration file. Uh, you need to edit this file to input your RV mining address. Uh, edit the number of threads that your CPU supports. And uh, the third thing is the path to the chunk storage folder itself that you set up in the previous step. In my case, it's the slash mnt slash rv slash my chunk storage. One thing I wanted to mention is there are two variants of the K minor. One is PyArmy, uh, which is based on Python, and the second one is Carmy, which is based on C code. Um, I found that the C or C version is faster, so I have been using that one. You also need to apply the MSR tweaks, which gives a boost to your random X hash rates. Uh, these are CPU level optimization that can be applied with root permissions. 
uh, the Ryzen platform uh, and the Threadripper platform are greatly benefited by this. So ensure that you apply this particular mod before running the miner. So now that you have set up the configuration file for the kminer, you launch the miner itself by running the .elf file. You execute the .carmi elf file and the miner would start running. If there are any issues, it would pop out the error message. Um, it's not to verbose the error message to exactly tell you what kind of error you might have encountered. but the guide has already covered the steps that you need to run for a successful execution of the miner itself. Now you may notice that it would not start hashing right away. That is because the miner has to first build up indexes of all the chunk storage files that you have synced before it can run uh, or start hashing. Now the subsequent runs of the miner does not have to suffer from this wait time because the indexes are built only once. The file that you are looking for is called carmi underscore index dot bin and this would be under the same directory the miner is downloaded into. You can monitor the hash rate on the pool side by logging into the website private web page that you would have received uh, once you have signed up for the pool. The pool's minimum payout limit is uh, 0.2 AR if I recall correctly and the payment duration is roughly 4 days. That's it from this video. Uh, in the next part we would be discussing on how to optimize the hash rate on your existing platform specifically focusing on the K-Miner optimization, in general how to debug the performance related bottlenecks uh, on your existing platform. Thanks a lot for spending time on this particular video. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.